And uh, you know, uh, for the pray, uh, worship and prayer encounter, like Pastor told us, it's going to be uh, years and months on down the road before you really understand everything that happened to us during that time. And so, you know, I, I, the, the thing that God has been really ministering to me is about the kingdom. And uh, so today, I'm going to continue, I'm going to talk to you uh, some, about some of the things that God has been talking to me about. Because uh, it's the season where the body of Christ is going to get out of the four walls. Uh, Y'all didn't get excited about that. Maybe I'll tell this side. It's the season that the body of Christ is going to get out of the four walls. Glory to God. We have been in the four walls long enough. And it's time now for the church to be the church. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. How many of you know the devil is being the devil? And so that means God's children need to be the children of the almighty God. And we need to take territories. How many of you know we have lost a lot of territory? And so now it's time for us to go and get our territory back. Amen. And so God was speaking to me. And so I'm going to be talking about doing the work of the kingdom doing the work of the kingdom you know in uh, Luke chapter 4 I'm gonna read, I want us to look at these scriptures because I want you to get these scriptures down in your heart these were some of the scriptures when I realized that I was anointed <laughs> I started meditating on these scriptures amen because I, I realized the word of God is for me amen and so in Luke chapter 4 in verse 18 it says the spirit of the Lord God everybody got it? in Luke chapter 4 in verse 18 I want you to see it because I need you to start prophesying this over your life you need to prophesy over your life I'm anointed how many of you know that you are anointed? Glory to God. How many of you know God didn't anoint you for nothing? Glory to God. Glory to God. In verse uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Somebody need to say that out loud. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Glory to God. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He's anointed you for what? to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and so now what I want you I want I'm first we're going to read about Jesus and we're going to read how God anointed Jesus and Jesus had a purpose his purpose was to preach the gospel to the poor. He was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And so now, I'm not going to say the next thing. I'm going to take you to Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 10. So let's go to Acts chapter 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts chapter 10, and verse 38 it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what who went about doing what and doing what all <laughs> that were oppressed of the devil for God was what with him all right and so now he says now how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him and so I want and I'm gonna just tell you about in first John chapter 3 and verse 8 it says that he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And you know, the thing that God was speaking to me, I want you to stay with me today because I believe that an anointing, a fresh anointing, uh, in this is going to fall upon us today. A fresh anointing has fallen upon me. And it's, it's not about me, it's about people. How many of you know you want an anointing for people? 
You don't want anointing just to be able to say I'm anointed. Because a lot of us say, God, if you anoint me, I'll do this and I'll do this. God say, I've already anointed you. And you haven't done anything with the anointing that I've already anointed you with. So why are you asking for more anointing? And so in, in, in he says now, he said how God anointed Jesus. And then Jesus tells us in John chapter 14, I want you to turn there. I want you to see something now because we're going to be, be free. And we're going to be about the Father's business. It's not about my business. It's not about your business. It's about the Father's business. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know it's past time? In John chapter 14, I want you to look at it. Everybody got it? John chapter 14. And we're going to begin reading in verse 12. You need to make these scriptures alive. You need to look at them. You need to read them. You need to meditate on them. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall ye do also. And greater works than these shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye have, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So now Jesus is telling his disciples. He said, you know what? Uh, the, work, uh, yeah, the work that you've seen me do, you're going to be able to do the same work. And greater works than these you're going to do. And he said, you know what? I'm going to go away and I'm going to send you back a comforter. He said, and then he told them, he said, now, while you're doing this, he said, just use my name. All you got to do is just use my name. Uh, I'm giving you power of attorney to just use my name. And so, you know, in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burdens shall be taken away from thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing and so I believe that the day is now where the yoke is being destroyed and the burdens are being removed we have everything that we need to destroy the works of the devil. We have, I'm not, you're not going to get it. You already have everything that you need. And, you know, I was just meditating on the word of God, and God was just speaking to me one day as I was just walking through the house. God was just speaking to me about uh, doing his work. And so, listen now, you know, when we came into the kingdom, we came into the kingdom running. We didn't come into the kingdom, get uh, got saved. You know, uh, <laughs> you know when uh, we got saved, <laughs> you know, we came in, people didn't tell us that we were going to become millionaires. I want you to hear me today. When I got saved, people told me that you need to tell somebody you done got saved. <laughs> and you need to go to your family. And you need to tell your family that you done got saved. And so God was talking to me. He said, if you look back from 1970, the 80s and the 90s, during that time, the body of Christ was being the body of Christ. Uh-huh. Uh, we were, you know, like I said, we got saved, and then we went uh, and we told other people that we were saved. And we started having Bible study, you know, like Pastor Hollins was saying, that, you know, that's how I met her. You know, it wasn't no, with no special uh, uh, meeting or anything. Uh, it was the fact that we all got saved, and we started meeting at different people's houses. And somebody would tell us, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so is having a Bible study. Somebody is having intercessory prayer. And so we would just go to that person's house. And that's how I met Pastor Hollins. And so anyway, I was thinking about this, that we were together 
and I can remember her very well and she was she would tell us y'all we got to pray for my husband you know, at this time, Pastor Hollins, he was a man uh, at Exxon in a big executive job, and he didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. Okay, and so she would come to that prayer meeting or the Bible study, and she would tell us, y'all, I need somebody, I need y'all to stand in the gap with me because I want my husband saved. And so we prayed, and we prayed for Pastor Hollins. And so when I found out that Pastor Hollins was saved, and the next thing I heard, Pastor Hollins was being a pastor. And I said, well, look, and we not some of our fruit of praying and interceding. And so that's what we were doing back in that season. We would go and we would pray and we would intercede. Somebody would tell us that we're going to have our family at a house. And we would show up in that house to pray with the family and to have Bible study. And we would see people saved and set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. We didn't have no titles. We just knew that God said go from house to house. You know, in the Bible it said they went from house to house. And the people were saved, delivered, and set free. And so listen now. So in the 80s and the 90s, that's what we did. We were just about kingdom business. It wasn't about can I get this fine car. It because uh, we weren't thinking about cars. But in somewhere in the 2000s, we started see, presenting God to people as Santa Claus. If you get saved, God will give you this. And if you get saved, God will give you that. And so after a while, you know, uh, God said, I'm tired of being Santa Claus. I never was Santa Claus. He said, I ain't giving you nothing. So here we are now. We, got a, we have got the generation that are serving God for stuff. And it's coming from the pulpit. It's not no, your fault. It it's came from the pulpit. Because the pulpit was trying to get as much money as they could. And so we told the people, you got to get the money. You got to get the money. And so we went after money instead of going after souls. Come on, I'm going to help you all today. I'm going to help you all today because in my Bible, you know, we talk about the 30-fold, the 60-fold, and the 100-fold. And I was looking that up, and I said, you know, where did we get that from? Some, yeah, some receive a son, 60, 30, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. And I was reading that. I said, that's found in Mark. And right there, it's talking about the planting the seed of the word. And it's talking about fruit. <laughs> it's talking about the fold of fruit. Some go out and get 30 fold. Somebody go out and get 60 fold. Somebody go out and get 100 fold return. Fruit. And then it talked about, listen. It was talking about, I'm not going to read it to you today because we're going to keep on moving. But I just want you to know how far we got off. Because we went after money. And so now God said, I want you to get back in the middle of the road. Ministry is about people. It's about people, people. And so he said now, he was talking about the rich young ruler. And uh, Jesus, he was talking to Jesus. He said, you know, I don't keep the commandments. And Jesus said, well, go and sell all you have. And uh, the man had a great, great riches. And he said, he went away sad. Let's just turn there. I want us to, to look at that because uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Mark chapter 10, let's go there. Mark chapter 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A fresh anointing for souls doing kingdom business, not just to get some money and to say, I got a big bank account. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let's just, uh, and so anyway, in verse 22, after he finished talking to the young man, and he was sad at that saying, when Jesus told him to sell all that he had, go and give to the poor. And he say, uh, come and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had what? Great possess possessions. And Jesus looked around and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? 
And the disciples, the disciples was astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust. He put that word in there. Trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. That young man trust in his riches. He couldn't see himself giving it up. So he went away sad. But Jesus said that trust in riches. In other words, I, I can't do nothing with my money because I need my money. I got to keep my money. So in other words, your money is your source. You, if God tell you to give it away, I can't give it away because if I give it away, I don't have nothing. In other words, I'm not trusting God because I feel like if God told me to give what I have away, that means God got something else better for me. I'm not going to have a loss. I'm going to have an increase. But if you don't know God like that, you'll be like the rich young ruler. He'll just, the young man, he just went away grieved. Jesus said it in verse 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? In other words, because undoubtedly they must have had some money. So that they saying, what, 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 what you mean? You know, <laughs> they astonished at his saying that a rich person can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus looking upon them saith, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, look at this now. We have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Yet verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house, a brethren, a sisters, a father, a mother, a wife, a children, a land for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold in this time. Now listen what he said now. <laughs> he said, oh, you, 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 you don't understand. There is no one that have left, have given it all up for my name and for the gospel. But that person that have put, turn, turn everything away. He said he shall receive a hundredfold in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and land with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. But many are, but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Jesus is telling them here, you got, you got it wrong, brother. Nobody give up any. If you give up for my name's sake and for the kingdom's sake, you're going to receive a hundredfold return in this life. And see, you know, have you ever heard the old folks say, you put the cart before the horse? Yeah, mama used to say that all the time, and I never understood what mama was talking about when she would be talking about somebody. She said, they got the cart before the horse. But you know, the horse is supposed to be out front pulling the cart. But instead, the cart then got in front of the horse. So something is messed up. And so that's what happened to us in the body of Christ. We got ahead. <laughs> we started going after money instead of going after the kingdom. And so when we go after kingdom, God going to give you the money. <laughs> Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to get y'all out of this knee, this, uh, this where the devil running you rampant. Because that's what's going on in the body of Christ. The devil is running you rampant trying to get some more money. And God said, if you just do my kingdom business, I'll make sure the money is there. <laughs> See, when you look at the word of God, that's what I'm saying. We don't trust God. We don't trust God. We do not trust God. See, when... Uh, Peter came to God, Jesus, and he said, you know, we, we need to pay some taxes. The taxes need to be paid. Who, you know, Jesus, all Jesus said, go to the uh, coal. And the first fish you pull out, <laughs> look in his mouth. Uh, there's the money going to be right in there. And so here we are. We are knocking ourselves out trying to get the money. And all the time, God said, if you go down on Fifth Street, there's a drunk down there. 
that drunk <laughs> need to be ministered to. If you go down there and minister to that drunk, and by the time you go down there and minister, he don't tell you the whole story. He just tell you to go down on Fifth Street to minister to the drunk. And you get down on Fifth Street, Fifth Street, and you're down there ministering to this drunk, and the drunk gets sobered up and gets saved and and and, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and then this drunk tell you, you know what? I'm an owner of a bank, and I, I come go with me. So you don't know what God got planned for us <laughs> when we start doing the kingdom business. See, but instead, we're trying to get the money when God knows the person who got the money for you. Glory to God. And so that's when I started looking back in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. And I, we were going from place to place. And we were going to LTI. And we were going this place. Just ministering the gospel. I ain't thinking about nothing but seeing people saved, people, people delivered. Seeing these young boys at LTI. We wanted to see them young boys uh, uh, delivered and set free and everything like that. And so I was just thinking about that. And so I was just thinking about how the blessings of God flowed. And we were the, at that time, there, you know, uh, I'm sure everybody that was at uh, Celebration of Life can, can uh, attest to this. And, and, you know, we were looking for an avenue to be a blessing to somebody. And I don't mean just blessing them with words of kindness, but we were in our pocketbooks. You know, we heard of somebody with a need, we didn't met the need. And we weren't concerned of how much we had left. We just wanted to make sure that person had their need met. Can y'all get find me? Can y'all hear me now? And so we were going about the father's business rather than going about our business. There was times when, you know, one time I found out this lady didn't have no clothes. I brought the woman to my house, opened my closet, and go in and get anything you want out of there. Nothing had a hold on me. Don't still don't have a hold on me. And so we got to get to the place where, and so, you know, and, and, but here we are now. We are so, so stuff conscious. We just so stuff conscious and so listen now and so we started asking God I want you to listen to this now we started asking God and we started telling God God if you give me a car I'll make sure I bring somebody to church with me God gave you the car and you forgot what church was yourself come on come on this serious business this serious business we still told God we promised God all kind of stuff God, if you bless me with this, I'll do this. You bless me with that, I'll do that. And the blessings flow to you. And then you did what you want to with it. The same thing happened in the house of God. God was blow, flowing in money, flowing in money in the 80s, the 90s into the house of God. And, and, and they were doing what they wanted to with it. Forgot about asking God, God, what you want me to do with your money? And then the house, we did what? It dried up. And then you wonder, God, what, what, what's the problem? What's the problem? God said, the problem is we went after stuff and forgot about doing kingdom business. God said, the money is still there. Finances, are, it, is, it is no shortage of finances. There is no shortage of finances. If you ever look, you know, when people have a go-to me fund, you look at that fund, they start out with $5, and the next time you look back at that fund, go-to me fund, that fund is up to $100,000. Where did that money come from? <laughs> the world got it, and the world give it. And the more they give the money away, the more money come back to them. But the devil got the house of God in, in, in a need mode. And we got our hands just like this. Can't nothing go out and can't nothing come in. Mm. Glory to God. And we in the house of God. And we can't pray for certain people. Because I hate them. There is something wrong with your heart. If you... Or rather, I, I wish they go to hell. There is something wrong with you. And you say you're a child of the Almighty God. And you in the house of God saying, I wish they go to hell. Go to a place where it's going to burn forever. And you want a person, a human to go there. There's something wrong with you. And that's where the body of Christ is like we done got just downright. You know, I, I think about, you know, when we. How many people in your family. It's lost as a goose. And you look at them like, <laughs> no big deal. They, they've been back there all their life. But where is compassion? 
Where are you? When the last time you prayed and you asked God to deliver them and set them free? Where is that prayer life at? Where were you praying? When the last time you prayed for your unsaved loved ones? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, I tell a testimony all the time because I, I, I feel that it's so fitting to tell. But I had, doing back in that time, I had a brother that was the devil. And I'm literally, he was literally the devil. He was the devil. If you ever seen the devil, he was the devil himself. And so this boy, he, he aggravates, he, 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 he loved to punish me. You know, he was just, you know, what, he would say some stuff that would curl me. You know, my hair was already curly, and that boy would curl it up tight with the stuff he would say to me. And so he would hurt my heart. He was hurt. He would hurt my heart. And so anyway, I, I, I like this woman, like uh, uh, Pastor Hollins, uh, was praying for her husband. I was praying for my brother. And, and you know, the, the, let, let me tell you something. When you're praying for somebody that's full of the devil, <clears throat> it going to look like they get worse before they get better. <laughs> In the natural, my brother got worse rather than getting better. But I kept crying out. I kept crying out to God for my brother. I said, God, you say me in my house. So well, I took my brother in my house. I said, that's my brother, and I love my brother dearly. I love my brother. I said, God, <laughs> we were two years different in age, you know, and, and I love my brother. And I said, no, 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 devil, you know, when I found out that the power of prayer, the power of intercession, I said, no, you're not going to have my brother. You're not going to have my brother. You're not going to have my brother. And I mean, I would travail and I would cry and then I would go to Monroe and the boy would cuss me for it, curse me for everything he could think of. And, and I would go home and I'd just cry. Oh, my God, he hurt my heart so bad, but I wouldn't let him see me cry. I wouldn't let, you know, that commercial, don't let him see you sweat. I said, oh, no, I ain't going to let you see me cry. I ain't going to let you see me cry but I get back in that car sometime and I would cry all the way back to Baton Rouge crying and praying praying and crying crying and praying for my brother God you got to save my brother you got to save my brother but then one day I was in my house tending to my own business I wasn't bothering nobody my brother called me I picked up the telephone you know at that time you couldn't see numbers and all that stuff I picked up the telephone and uh, he didn't say, hey, he didn't say nothing. He just said, you blankety blank, 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 you stop praying for me. Leave me alone. I said, wow. And he hung up. And I, I put that phone down and I started dancing. I said, wow, we, God is getting to him. God is moving and God is moving. God is moving. I got so happy I didn't know what to do. I forgot about his cursing. I knew God was moving. And so I went on about my business. So next thing I know, the boy got sick. And the boy in a coma. <laughs> and they point to the, uh, uh, the door. <laughs> and they say, if he get up to think he want to go to that door, he going to drop dead. His heart's so bad. He ain't going to make it. He ain't going to make it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I had to go back to crying again. I said, God, I said, I done prayed too many years. And I done prayed too long, too hard. I know good and well this boy ain't going to die without me knowing he's saved. And so I had to go on a, I need, had to go minister at home. And so I went to Pastor Pam. I said, Pastor Pam, do I need to go on this trip or do I need to stay here? And she said, well, I don't think staying here going to do you no good. God got it. You're going to do what God done told you to do. So I went to home. So I came back home, and I was at home that Monday. And so I'm around there tending my own business, ain't doing nothing. And I got a call. <laughs> and it was from my sister-in-law, Mitchell's wife. And I picked the phone up. She said, uh, Celine, she said, Mitchell just accepted Jesus. I said, what? <laughs> now, I done prayed all this time for the boy to get saved. And then she tells me the boy came out of the coma. And the boy accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of his life. I called my husband, Pastor James. He wasn't no pastor at that time. I called him. I said, we got to go to Monroe. I said, Mary say Mitchell is saved. I said, I got to go see. <laughs> so he was still just about to get out to the hospital. But I mean, the God brought that boy back. And I mean, I, I mean, just totally just delivered him. And so anyway, we was at, uh, when we went to Monroe, we went to Pastor Johnny's house. We stopped by there first. <laughs> And so we was telling him about what had happened to Mitchell, and we was going to go to the hospital. So Pastor Johnny said, uh, I want to go with y'all. I said, ooh, oh, 
don't know whether that's a good idea. I didn't tell him, but I was like, ooh. <laughs> he hated them <laughs> because Mary was a part of their ministry. They haven't done nothing to him, but just the fact that he was a part of their ministry and he cussed her. He did everything to get her out of that ministry. And the girls stayed faithful to the ministry. And so when he said uh, he wanted to go, I said, I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. But I said, okay, <laughs> okay. So we go into Mitchell's hospital room, and he always kept his legs crossed. And he's sitting there with his legs crossed, just as shaking them. And he looked up, and he saw Johnny. And he jumped up out of his seat. He said, well, how you doing, Pastor Drum? <laughs> I said, wow, that boy really saved that <laughs> God took really saved that God had totally turned that boy's life completely around. That next Sunday, I was at Liberty Christian Center, sitting on the front row with Mitchell Harris. I got the picture. Me and that boy sitting there together. Me and that boy, boy got his hands uplifted, praising God. But I think about it all the time. If I had a gave up, if I had a started cursing him back for all the cursing that he done me, I would have tied the hand of God in his life. You cannot look at the, that's why, look not at the things which are seen. For the things which are seen are temporal and they are subject to change. I mean, just instantly. I mean, God brought that boy out of that coma. coma. The boy opened his eyes. Mary said, she asked him, say, do you want to be saved? Mitchell said, yeah, I want to be saved. And so, you know, of course, you know, we done heard these stories about, you know, when people in comas, they have a visitation and everything. And so I'm trying to find out from him, boy, did you have a visitation? He said, I ain't had nothing. <laughs> but it didn't matter about a visitation. God visited him when he came back. There are some people in our families, people. We got to forget about what they've done to us. We got to forget about what they smell like. We got to forget about that they are uh, not like us. And we got to go after their soul. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is what? Wise. And Jesus have told his disciples. And he told us, it's for us too. He said, I want you to go here into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, to every creature. He said, every creature. He said, uh, baptizing them. <laughs> he said, lay hands on them, cast out devils. My God, they shall speak with new tongues. And he said, I'm going to be the one confirming your word with signs following. When the last time you went to love one of yours? Forgot about, forget about your, you, your pride. See, I, I, I made up my mind. My pride ain't hitting on nothing. My pride ain't getting me no point, grounding points. And so I've decided, you know, uh, Pastor Morgan and I, we went to the hospital to see somebody. And uh, the guy, you know, just the guy just came on the elevator with us. Come on, they're coming on the elevators. And he's telling us something, telling us, telling us something. And so anyway, we said the third floor. And when we got to the third floor, he got off on the third floor. And immediately, we said, can we pray for you? You know, and he was welcome. He was welcome. He was right there waiting. Because he had got a negative report. His daddy was going to die. He wanted somebody. Some God put us there right at that moment for him. And so God want to put us in the right place at the right time. But we at home wringing our hands over another car, over another house, over another this. When all the time God want us to be out there where the people are. People are hurting. People are hurting. People are hurting. And we got what the people need. But instead the devil telling you, you need to be delivered your own self. I believe as we go, <laughs> I believe as we go, we will be delivered. I believe that's why we're not delivered. It's because we're still sitting in the same place, making the same old dumb confession that we've been making for 15 years. I can't do this and I can't do that. God said, well, whenever you decide to speak my word and go do what I told you to do, you'll walk into your deliverance. <laughs> Glory to God. Had a testimony about somebody. They went somewhere. 
and they was talking to this person. I guess that's where I get those, those things from, <laughs> talking to somebody. And they was just telling them about, you know, Jesus. And they, they prayed for him and prayed for their family and everything like that. And said, the glory just filled the room where they were sitting down. And they were talking and everything. Said, the glory just filled the room. And this poor old lady said, her, her, her countenance just changed. And she was just so excited that somebody was praying for him. And she could feel Jesus like that. And so anyway, when she got up, her bill fell out of her purse some kind of way. It fell out. And anyway, when it fell out, you could see on that disconnect. And the woman looked at it and the woman say uh disconnect is that now and the lady say yeah but uh, you know that's okay that's okay she said no is it now and the lady said yes it's now she said give it here let me know how much it is and it was like but the lady took care of every bit of it we need to get in our season we need to get in our set place and we need to flow with the holy ghost and watch god change situations in our life on your job how many people know you're anointed how many people know that you are anointed or are you hiding who you are but you come in here on Sunday and you're all anointed something is wrong with that picture something is wrong with that picture and that's the devil the devil have us bound up because we are not the ambassadors on this earth like we're supposed to be Jesus have called us he reconciled us in 2 Corinthians 5 it says therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new cre creature all things have passed away and all things has become new I'm a new creature the old Celine died I died I died I died and so he went on, Paul went on telling them now, you're a new creation. And he said, you know, Jesus now want us to reconcile others to God. God want to get some glory out of our lives. Because what? We are telling people about God. And we're not going to tell them, you get saved, you're going to get a, a BMW. You get saved, God going to give you a house. God may do that, but we're not going to tell them that. The blessings of the Lord, the word of God say the blessings of the Lord make it rich and it adds no sorrow with it. So I believe that when we get about the Father's business, God is not going to allow us to outdo him. God is not going to allow us to outdo him. I believe a lot of our blessings are tied up in our laziness it's tied up in our laziness some of our blessings are tied up in wanting to be somebody God never called you to be your blessings are tied up because you need to be who God called you to be you know when people go to telling me you know all this stuff about I'm going to the, con to the, to the, to the nations and everything like that that don't impress me because I'm thinking about I got neighbors I need to go to and you sending me to the country to the nations you see what I'm talking about but that's what the devil want me to do go home and wait till they call me to the nations and all the time people all around me dying and going to hell and I'm sitting with my anointed self waiting to go to the nations and that's what's going on in the house of God we can't witness to our neighbor because ain't nobody looking because I want my name to be out in spotlights and God say your name ain't in spotlights and it ain't going to be in spotlights the only spotlights your name going to be is because you be going to jail doing something you ain't got no business doing We taking off our royal raiments. I'm so important. I'm so important. I can't. I can't go down where the drug addicts are. I'm too important to go down there. I, I'm, I'm too important. Do you know what my name is? <laughs> Your name means nothing. If you're not going where God telling you to go. And you're not ministering to who God telling you to minister to. You are nobody. You're not good for nothing. 
And so I want you today. I want you today. I want you today. I want that's the first anointing that I want God to release in that this place. That's the first. Some of you, uh, oh Jesus, God got a song on the inside of you for somebody, but because you're not, you you you, you can't do it at the church. You won't even sing the song. Come on, y'all. We gotta get. We gotta get you. Somebody. I, I can't pray because you know when my anointing, my anointing is is bigger than you. I don't heard all that old foolish stuff. I, my anointing is too big for that little church. My anointing. Oh no, my. I can't go there. My anointing is too big. Wow. Where is that in the Word of God? Where's the strip scripture that gonna back you up that you too big? To go where God. Jesus said I must go to Samaria. I must go. He went to a whore at, at the well. And here we are. Now we can't go where, where the whores are. Because what? My name. My, they may think I'm down there trying to get them. Come on y'all. God going to script all this foolishness. That have come into the house of God. That have flowed from the head on down. It's going to be stripped out of the house. This house is going to be a house that is about people. That love people. I don't care what color. I don't care what, how, how much money you got in your pocket. That's why we don't exhort nobody with money. And we don't exhort nobody that ain't got no money. It's about people, people. It's about people. It's about people because the minute you start exhorting people because they got money, those people are going to try to put a noose around your neck and tell you what to preach, what not to preach. The devil is a lie. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to preach. Glory to God. It's about people, y'all. It's about people. It's about people. Forget about all this stuff that you're thinking is so important. When we close our eyes and when we get to heaven, God going to say, how many people did you bring with you? How many souls? Because he, he going to look around and he going to say, well, I saw on earth you got all them cars and I saw you got all the houses and all the fine clothes, but I don't see too many people. You had all kind of energy when you went out on the car lot trying to get a deal. But when you came across a needy soul, you had no energy at all. You couldn't even open your mouth and say, God loves you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Every shackle that the devil has bound us up with. Father God, we come in at that today. We come in at all these shackles, all these man-made sayings. We come in, we want to pull all this foolishness down. We want to pull it down. It's about people. It's about souls. It's about laying hands on the sick and seeing the sick recover. It's about the anointing, being walking in the anointing for people. It says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. And with power. And he went about healing. He went about oh, praying for the oppressed. And the depressed. When you with your oppressed stuff self. Pray for somebody that's oppressed. You and them will get delivered. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. When you pray for somebody that's sick, the sickness that in your body will leave. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want, uh, Lord God, a tangible anointing, a tangible anointing to be released up in this place. An anointing, Lord God, where the people know that they are anointed. And they all they got to do is just obey the word of God. It's not about how many scriptures you know. It's about knowing that God loves you. And knowing that God has saved me. God has set me free. When we start running from house to house, we didn't know no scripture. We didn't know nothing but the Holy Ghost. We knew the Holy Ghost. We knew the Holy Ghost. And we would pray in the Holy Ghost. And then we would go lay hands on people. Pray it in the Holy Ghost. We're going to activate the Holy Ghost in our lives again. And we're going to allow God to lead and guide us. 
lead and guide us. Father God, we need to start singing that song. I'm, I, I have decided to follow God. The world behind me, because the world right now is mixed in between us. The world is holding on to us right now. We, we as much of, of the world as everybody else. But we got to let the world go. And we got to decide. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, preach it. Preach it. He told in Timothy, he said, be instant in season and instant out of season. When they want to hear it, preach it. When they don't want to hear it, preach it. Some people going to receive you and some not. Say next. Some people going to die. Say next. Don't stop moving just because something happened. Just keep on moving next. Jesus said, if they don't receive you in this town, he said, shake the dust off and just go on to the next town. We got to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. We got to keep on moving because we don't know when we're going to hit. Yes, yeah, somebody that need what we have. Father God, I thank you right now. I thank you. I thank you right now, Lord God. That you are activating every person, Lord God, under the sound of my voice. You are activating every person, Lord God, on streaming live right now, Lord God. Father, we've sat long enough. We've sat long enough. We've sat in our glass houses long enough. We've sat in our fine cars long enough. Father God, we're going to let them go. We're going to get up and we're going to be about the Father's business. And Father God, we're going to see the glory. We got to see your glory. We got to see your glory. We got to see your glory like never before. Father God, I thank you right now. I thank you right now. I thank you right now. Father, that you release, Lord God, energy. Energy. <laughs> energy for the next level. Energy for the next level. Energy right now in the lives, in each and every one of our lives, Lord God. In each and every one of our lives, you release energy. Energy right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, be activated in our lives again. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost to be activated in our lives again. Where we say we really pray in tongues. Lord God, not da 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 da, but pray, pray, pray in tongues. And get direction. Come on, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're 